Today we'll be having a webinar with um, a very respected medical laboratory scientist in Nigeria and is also a global phenomenon. So our topic today is lapreneurship, the profitability, the prospects and the profits in an emerging economy. We have a very seasoned um, um, guest who will be taking us through that topic today. And um, I'm sure you'll be having the best of time listening to him. He has a wealth of experience, both on the bench as a medical laboratory scientist, as a quality expert, and also as a CEO. In fact, that's one of the reasons we decided to bring him here. So what inspired the topic that we're discussing today? One of it is the fact that um, we believe that all of MLS doesn't end on the bench. That some of us have been dreaming still dreaming and will eventually emerge as CEOs. So we decided to get a professional who has um, who has climbed through the ranks, who has known those aspects of being good on the bench, being a quality expert, and then has also ha has hands-on experience doing a startup and um, arriving at being the CEO of multiple companies. If you've seen pictures or visited LabCrest, you will know that that's one place where a lot is done. In fact, quietly, whether Sojin knows it or not, he's a mentor to quite a number of medical laboratory scientists. Um, incidentally, I, I, I have the privilege of working with someone who said that the last two jobs he has been he has had the privilege to work in, you know, Soji dropped the link for the advert of these jobs in the WhatsApp groups where he belonged to. And somehow he clicked on those jobs and he has had good experiences so far. So directly or indirectly, uh, Soji, Soji is somebody that um, um, has mentored, has positively impacted a lot of people. And of course, we know that he is the pre he's presently serving as, as a national executive with the AMSA. I, I want us to make welcome Mr. Olusoji Billy Rose, who will be our guest for this evening, and he will have some time to talk to us as well as entertain questions. Now, I know that a lot more will come out during the question and answer session. So how are we going to do this? So everyone who is here, please, if you have a question, so that we will not interrupt the flow of our chief this evening, just make sure you're noting it down somewhere. Either you're noting it by your side or you're or you're using the question and answer um, 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 tab on your screen, just note them down. When we get to that portion, when we get to that time, I'll give you the opportunity to talk. So Mr. Soji, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Obina, and uh, happy new year to everyone, both in Nigeria and across the world. It's been a very uh, rare privilege for me to be mounting your platform today and sharing a few thoughts uh, with everyone about uh, the possibilities and the prospects and if you like the profitability of uh, uh, the lab uh, ecosystem in, in Nigeria. So is a, is a, a, I, I, I take it as a honor and uh, uh, anytime I have the opportunity to share with colleagues, I'm a little bit emotional and quite passionate because uh, I want as much as possible to see how we can recruit foot soldiers that will help build the kind of uh, country, the health system that we want for ourselves so that it wouldn't be the next generation uh, doing this. Uh, I am very hopeful and optimistic that our generation can change the uh, narrative in Nigeria, in Africa, of course, and then uh, by extension globally. Because when we get it right in Nigeria, being a very big player uh, in the continent and in the sub-region, uh, definitely Africa will be positioned on the path of growth uh, uh, and development and advancement. So it's key. I, I, I am passionate and emotional when I have to speak about this because I cannot wait to see the kind of change that we anticipate for our dear nation. Uh, we are grappling with much. Uh, incidentally, they say to 
to whom much is given, much is expected. But when you come to Nigeria, much is given to us. But what we are giving out is not commercially to what the level of investment that we have had uh, by virtue of training and all of that. I'm talking now not only uh, to colleagues or MLS, I'm talking uh, to the nation, because if you look at the same, the same expectation you know, we have from, uh, from both the doctors, the pharmacists, and everyone. We want, much has been committed into our hands, but whether or not we have been able to give our topmost best to, to, the, to the society, whether or not we have been able to engage enough and do something more deliberately about the healthcare indices and statistics with the view of changing the, the, the narrative, you know, is another thing altogether. So I am hopeful that probably with uh, conversations like this, we'll be able to uh, get more foot soldiers who will believe in the nation uh, called Nigeria and stay back to develop it rather than thinking about uh, how to move to greener, you know, what they call greener pastures you know, and all of that. Thank you very much, Mr. Obinda. Uh, will Welcome you want sir. me to proceed now? Yes, please, please. You can share your screen and carry on, sir. Okay, excellent. So uh, let me just do that. Basically, we're looking at the uh, lab preneurship, practice, profitability, and prospect in an emerging economy. Uh, I'm happy that we have been able to find the time to converge, you know, to talk to ourselves on a, to share some thoughts on a few uh, areas that I believe has been very much neglected. And today, uh, at least we are, we are coming into the typical uh, uh, lab, into the uh, typical lab, but what we are doing today is not testing. What we are doing today, we are entering into an entrepreneurship laboratory where we'll be able to look at uh, the various prospects and, pros uh, and uh, practices that can help encourage you know, our practice. So basically that's what we'll be looking at today. So next slide, please. By way of outline, I'll be looking at definitions, the global outlook, prospect, market gaps, and in the practice, business growth principles, crossing the hurdles, and then uh, we conclude. Okay, next slide. Now, entrepreneurship basically refers to the process of doing business in layman's term. Okay, the process of doing business, uh, creating and managing new enterprise. Of course, there are associated risks when it comes to doing business, not to speak about the, talk about the uh, not conducive, not so-called, con not very well conducive environment in the nation. So the associated, associated risk uh, of doing business, but at the end of the day, those who are resilient enough are able to navigate through those risks and break even. So entrepreneurship looks more holistically at creating and managing new enterprises, okay? And then bearing any of the risk that is associated with such enterprise, there is nothing that anybody does that does not have its associated risk. So business is just one of those uh, uh, enterprise as well that has its own risk. Of course, at the end of the day, the aim will be to make profit. But you know, lab, like any of the health-related services that we provide, whether it's clinical or pharmaceutical and all of that, it is actually a social welfare, it's a social service. So the first motivation will not be profit, okay? Because a social uh, welfare package. But of course, we all know that when quality is delivered, when excellence is delivered, it goes with uh, rewards. And that is where the profit now comes in. 
But for me, as a professional in business, the first motivation for going into business will not be particularly what profit I am going to make. That will be secondary, which at the end of the day will come as key. Naturally, the profit will follow. If you have the mindset that I'm coming to render excellent service, I'm coming into the market to penetrate the market for me to be able to close certain gaps that are in the market. And I want to ensure that, you know, I bridge the service gap. At the end of the day, of course, you, uh, you make some profit. Okay. So basically, when we talk about Lapri Noshi, we're looking at, we're looking at uh, any innovation or innovative idea that will help us solve problems. Okay. So that is what we are looking at. In fact, classically, there are organizations and uh, business schools that even have uh, lab preneurship uh, uh, engagements or programs at this way, okay? Where people are brought in and then taught the art of business. So it's something that we also need to be looking at. And I want to thank uh, uh, EHA Clinic you know, for looking into this direction. Next slide. So what is an emerging economy? Because we're looking at the practice, prospect, profitability in an emerging economy, okay? Uh, the lab enterprise. What is an emerging economy? An emerging market economy is one that is transitioning from, from a developing economy into a developed economy, okay? So it's transitioning. It offers greater returns to investors because of the rapid growth that is occurring you know, in such climes. Nigeria has a GDP of 441.5 billion US dollars. That is huge. And that is why Nigeria is termed the largest economy in Africa, followed by South Africa with a GDP of about 418 billion US dollars. This statistic is as at 2001, okay? So Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt are leading uh, emerging economies in, in, in Africa. We have the highest level of GDP. With the highest level of GDP means that, of course, Nigeria have certain level of purchasing power of goods and services, okay? It makes us an enabling environment for investment, and it's an investment destination as it were. The average annual GDP growth of Nigeria is about 3.5%, okay? So we have always have uh, growth, at least in the past few years, significant growth. However you look at it, we have not had negative declines as it were. So Nigeria is a huge uh, market. And the sector that is contributing largely to the GDP growth is oil sector. But among the other sectors, services, okay, services contribute quite a lot of which the, the, the health care services is one of them which the lab is a subset or a subset, okay, of the healthcare services. So we're contributing quite a lot, you know, to the GDP growth of the country. So Nigeria is, as we speak, uh, the largest economy in Africa. Next slide. Not just in Africa, Nigeria is, Nigeria is also emerging as a global player, okay? In fact, by 2031, Nigeria is projected to have a GDP growth of about 1 trillion, 1 trillion. We're already in 2023, okay? So that says a lot that the boom times are here. And if there is any time that anyone should begin to think about investment in Nigeria, any country, any investor from any part of the world should begin to think about investment. If there's any way anybody needs to look at, it is Nigeria. And I'll tell you why later. Now, Nigeria is, like I mentioned, the largest in Africa, the largest economy, okay? And the 31st in the world, 31st. So uh, whether we like it or not, 
We might not be where we want to be, but conservatively and relatively, relatively speaking, Nigeria is not doing badly on the global stage. Nigeria is one of the most developed countries in Africa. Okay. Now, like I mentioned earlier, services is the largest sector of the economy and is accounting for about 50% of the total GDP services, of which, of course, the health sector is a key, uh, a key sector, uh, providing uh, social services to the nation. Now, US, China, Japan,